Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, we just got a report that a very popular cruise destination is thinking they're actually going to be down in cruise ship visits by almost 20% in the upcoming season. We also have some sad news about the gentleman who jumped overboard directly in front of his family. More news on that Brazilian visa that's coming up for travelers that you're going to need if you're going to go on a cruise or a trip down into Brazil. And finally, we also have Princess Cruise Line is, yeah, they're canceling a very popular cruise on their very popular Sun Princess and a lot of passengers, they're just not happy. So a hugely popular destination is New Zealand. And they are now announcing that, believe it or not, in this booming cruise time right now, where it's really hard to even get a cruise cabin for the rest of this year, the next season upcoming is actually thinking they're gonna be down about 200 cruise visits. They normally get about 1,000 a year and they're gonna be down 200. That's 20% drop in one year. And they're touting a variety of reasons. Obviously, deployment is an issue because of what's happening in the Red Sea and with the Panama Canal shortage of water. Their you know, cruise lines are rethinking their deployment of all their cruise ships. But they're also saying that Costs are way up in New Zealand for cruise ships, from docking fees for the cruise ships to taxes, new taxes that have been introduced on cruise ship passengers to things like bunkering and refueling and resupplying fruits and vegetables, plus the heavy restrictions environmentally for the area that they all have to scrub their holes before going, etc. It all adds up and it's becoming very costly for the cruise lines to go from Australia into New Zealand when they could just stay in Australia, if you know what I mean, where the costs are less right now. So they're saying that they do believe they have a key destination. It, it's beautiful in New Zealand, absolutely stunning. And the, you know, so many different varieties of places to visit and different things to do. It's an absolutely amazing place to visit. But if they're pricing themselves out of the market, I mean, it's a business, right? Cruise ships are in it to make money. And if they uh, don't think they can make a profit, they're just not going to go. And they're worried that this could be an ongoing trend as opposed to a short-lived one-time thing. We also have some pretty sad news is that story that we reported this week of the 20 year old who jumped overboard directly in front of his father and brother uh, about 4 a.m. in the morning. He was pretty heavily inebriated and had words with his father that and then walked over and climbed out one of those windows you can open on the top open deck by the pool and hot tubs and jumped overboard. Well, despite the best efforts of the crew as well as other passengers and the Coast Guard, uh, he hasn't been found and the Coast Guard has officially called off the search for this gentleman. The family maintains he's still out there somewhere, but let's try and be honest here. That's a, a, a small hope indeed. I really hope that does come true. I really do, but um, the longer this goes on, the lot becomes a much less likely situation, especially when somebody is pretty heavily inebriated when they jump overboard. And it seems like it's just a spur of the moment, angry, whim, crazy decision. And sometimes that's all it takes, but it's strange how it always seems to have alcohol involved, right? Now, for those of you getting ready to travel to Brazil, I was having to go to Brazil in January of this year. Not my best trip. I got sick. I had every flight delay in the world. It was not a fun trip. <laughs> Let's just say that. Oh, and by the way, people have been commenting to me saying that, hey, Don, no wonder people could not understand you in Brazil. They don't speak 
Spanish, they speak Portuguese. Yes, I, I, I know that, but I speak English and they didn't speak English. <laughs> and I don't speak Portuguese, but I found one person who spoke Spanish. And they, between my very limited Spanish and them, I was able to get my flights and find out where to go, etc. But they didn't speak English, they didn't speak French, they had no idea what I was saying, and I didn't speak Portuguese. And I was like, out of 30 people that were there at that counter, I found one person who spoke Spanish. So yes, I know they don't speak Spanish. I was lucky that somebody spoke Spanish. <laughs> so I just wanted to clear that up as well. But one of the things that I had to apply for, I paid for, was uh, the new travel visa that Brazil has introduced out to people. And the minute I paid for it, three hours later, they said it's no longer necessarily, Sari, you don't have to have it now until April. Well, great. I've already paid for it. They never sent me my money back because they approved it. So you're approved. You don't need it, but you're approved. Thank, thanks, thanks for that, Brazil. I really appreciate that extra fee that I didn't need to pay at all. But now it turns out April's coming up, right? Here we are. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's not, you don't need it anymore. Uh, 2025 is the next goal to have this up and running. Apparently it's just not working. Their computer system is just not, uh, the apps are using and the fee, it, it, it's just not working properly. It's taking way longer to get approvals and things like that than they said it was going to take. It said it should take a maximum of three to four days and it's ending up taking three to four weeks. And that's even if you get through in the first place. So, yep, if you're traveling to Brazil anytime soon, you don't need that travel visa anymore because uh, they, they can't get it working properly. And so now it's not going to happen until 2025. Now, Princess Cruise Line has launched the inaugural season of the Sun Princess. I thought it was a beautiful ship on board. I can't wait to get back on. I've already booked two more cruises on her and yeah, but she's getting a lot of people a little bit angry right now because they've canceled a, a, quite a bit of a few upcoming cruises. They're sailing the Mediterranean right now and they've canceled the port of Santorini saying on many occasions they're canceling it because of ship congestion. It appears that there are just too many ships in port that day for here's an example on one day that they were planning on going on the total number of passengers getting off was 17,500 passengers in Santorini well Santorini entire population is 15,000 so they would more than double the population in that one day and it becomes you know tours get sold out quickly etc cetera, etc cetera. there's not enough things to do so princess has decided to eliminate that port and instead they're going to go to Chania Crete. Now, as an example, it's not very busy there. So uh, roughly the average amount of passengers there would be between five and 7,500 people. And Chania has 111,000 population. So much bigger area, much more population, less chances tours are going to be sold out on you and much less congestion in the town. Now, Chania is a beautiful little port. They have some amazing beaches nearby. If you can get out to them by some of those little tour boats that they do, it has a very Italian feel almost with those coffee shops all along the water and lots of places, nooks and crannies to get into, in and out and an absolutely stunning mountain views behind it. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful port. But let's face it, when you think of going to Greece, the first thing you think of is the white buildings along the mountain seashore with the blue roofs, that's Santorini. People think of that. That is what they picture in the head when you picture Greece. And now you're, you're missing out on that very picturesque, most popular port in Greece by far, by far. And while yes, you may get a better guest experience, a lot of guests are saying, yeah, okay, but that's the one I wanted to go to. 
That's why I'm booking this cruise in the Mediterranean was to go to Santorini. And so it's a little bit of a give and take. You're gonna maybe get a better experience, a cute little port, fun little port to go to, but it's not the port you asked for. And especially, especially, it's not the port that you picture when you're doing the Mediterranean. And when you say Santorini, it immediately conjures up those images. When you say Chania, a lot of people say, where? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just the situation. Well, let me know in the comments down below, would you be upset if Santorini was canceled, even though you're going to a less congested area? Or do you think that was a great move by Princess? I'm, I'm okay with either, but I'm telling you, if I was booking this trip and I wanted to go to Santorini, especially if I was bringing somebody there for the first time who wanted to visit Greece, I would probably be pretty upset. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel blogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.